Hi guys, today I'm talking about having a spirited child or a child with a sensory processing either disorder or problem. So for a while I've thought that something was off a little bit about my daughter. She reacts with high emotion to many activities, including being told to come and eat for dinner and needing to leave a place she wants to play in the park. Um, she hates tags on her clothes. She used to hate having her diaper changed as a newborn and, and an infant. And she hated taking a bath like when it was her first time to take a bath and many, many other things, including trouble with sleep. And she doesn't like textures of certain foods and she would actually gag on them. It wasn't even just that she didn't really like it. It was causing her a real problem. Hey daughter is polar opposite of my son in their temperament and she seems to be much more needy, clingy, wanted to be held all the time when she was younger and even now, even now as a toddler sometimes she's still like that. She hates being alone for a time out. She is intense in how she reacts emotionally to seemingly anything. I only got to a point where I just accepted that this is who she is and try not to get as frustrated and angry when she doesn't listen or obey what I want her to do. Come to the realization that there must be something about a food that is not right for her if she doesn't want to eat it. Maybe in pain, scared, or any number of other emotional things that are just genuinely distressing her. And that's why she's reacting as she is. It's not just to be difficult or to be disobedient even. It's been extremely exhausting <laughs> for the most part and sometimes embarrassing because people think that me or my husband just spoil her and we don't discipline her very well. But I'm really grateful that I found some explanations as to what is really going on for her. I was listening to a parenting podcast online and I heard of the book called Raising Your Spirited Child. And it's a guide for parents whose child is more intense, sensitive, perceptive, persistent, and energetic. The author explains nine different aspects of a spirited child, including, they call it intensity, persistence, sensitivity, perceptiveness, Adaptability, regularity, energy, first reaction, and mood. Jessica rates extremely high um, on everything except for the first reaction and mood because she generally has a good mood. First reaction to everything is not always bad. She likes new stuff. She's kind of a little bit of a go-getter and a risk taker. Jessica is intense in how she experiences her, emotion, her emotions though. She doesn't just cry, but she wails and explodes. Um, this is part of the intensity part. And I used to think that she was experiencing emotions deeply and intensely, kind of like I do, because I do experience my emotions that way. She has a, has staying power and can cry for a very long period of time without letting up unless you pick her up and console her. Um, that's part of the persistence. My husband ignores her, which, you know, when she cries, which has driven me up a wall because I figure he's not really, that she's not really learning anything like how to control her emotions or what to do with them. But this trait they call persistence, which means that they're goal oriented and they're unwilling to give up easily. Um, Jessica is sensitive in the fact that she has to have quiet to sleep. She doesn't like tags on her clothes and she needs her socks just so with no little nothing, little things inside there. She's picky or what they call a selective eater. Um, she has strong reactions to how things feel, whether they're good or bad. She continuously apologizes when my husband and I are having a heated argument, which means she's sort of like sensitive to the environment around her, to what's going on with us. The fourth defining characteristic of a spirited child from this book is perceptiveness. And Jessica's always noticed little things, especially like animals or birds in the air. This was her first word was actually bird, bird, bird. <laughs> Um, it was very small bird that I wouldn't have noticed necessarily because it was really, really high up. Telephone pole outside. She's not great with remembering directions because she can easily get distracted when like playing on her way, like if you tell her to do something. On her way there, she may end up going in the living room and play and do something else. Adaptability has been the worst. She hates when one activity ends and another begins, especially when that involves like leaving the park. Other extremely active activity like when we, we when we ever we take her out to any little anything outside she loves to play on then she's just has a fit to leave and it's like a screaming knockdown fight to leave she requires like 10 to 20 minutes to transition from sleep to wake time in the morning right now still involves nursing um, I don't know what will happen when we stop the nursing because you know she still needs some time to wake up and I don't know if I'll say, you know, you need to go back to bed if you're not gonna be happy when you wake up. So we'll see what we do with that. She's always been irregular with her sleep eating and even her bowel movements. They've never really been at the same time of day. Um, the food can sometimes range for several hours depending if she's eaten or not. 
I learned that these kids need a more rigorous schedule from this book. They're saying they need, even though they seem like they're not scheduled kids, they actually need a more rigorous schedule, even though they seem like they don't want one at all. Jessica's high energy and always moving, so energy was another thing. Climbs on the couch even still to this day. Um, though we have established a rule that's not allowed, she still forgets because she needs to move. Even when she's supposed to be doing something quiet, like coloring at the table, she's always standing up and moving around and jumping around. She's much happier when she's moved a lot in any given day. Jessica's an extrovert to a very high level, so her first reaction to things is not always negative and doesn't seem to hold back too much when she does. To watch, sometimes she likes to watch things a bit before jumping in. Sometimes she had a hard time when we first started preschool. When she first arrived, she would cry a bit more. Um, now she's a little bit better about that. I'm not sure if she actually has sensory processing disorder, which um, Star Institute, organization that does a lot with kids with sensory processing problems, says that a sensory processing disorder exists when sensory signals are either not detected or don't get organized in appropriate responses. Pioneering occupational therapist, educational psychologist, and neuroscientist A. Jean Ayers likened SPD, sensory processing disorder, to a neurological traffic jam that pre prevents certain parts of the brain from receiving the information needed to interpret sensory information correctly. A person with SPD finds it difficult to process and act upon information received through the senses, which creates challenging in performing countless everyday tasks. Motor clumsiness, behavior problems, anxiety, depression, school failure, and many other problems may impact those who do not have effective treatment. So we may consider getting evaluated, sensory processing problem, but, and even if she doesn't have full-blown sensory processing problem, I'm sure that we could benefit from her learning, like occupational therapy would be something that they would do, and um, one of the things they might do is with food, because if you have issues with gagging or other kind of food problems, which she does have, still a little bit, not as bad as when she was younger, then they can work with you on that. And so that's something that we might consider for the future. So I hope this has been helpful and I will talk to you later. Bye-bye.